that does that is specifically for scientific research kind of thing. Crowdfund your scientific research. My work. Um, but it is a concern, and so we got to think carefully. You know, where are we getting the money from to pay for the salaries? I'm not. I know I hear every so often, you know, these scientists make their make so much money and what have you. And <laughs> it's interesting. I got to tell you, it's not true. There's uh, not there's a lot of the big names do make a fair amount of money. Those of us who are down lower, no, <laughs> we definitely don't. So I wasn't necessarily surprised to see this particular article come across from science. PhD students demand wage increases amid rising cost of living. Um, and that is quite frankly because as a graduate student, you don't make a lot of money. And for those who are unfamiliar, let me give you a little bit of background on how it works for most graduate students. Typically, um, when you apply to graduate school, you are, if you're not paying for it out of pocket yourself, um, you are often offered a reaching a, a research assistantship or a teaching assistantship or an RA or a TA. With a TA, the teaching assistantship, you're basically, you know, you're, you're TAing a class. Some of those folks, if you, if you were an undergrad, some of those folks were graduates. Some of those folks teaching you were graduate students, um, which is a great experience because for folks who want to go on to be teachers themselves, that's a great way to to learn. Um, is just to practice doing it yourself, figure out what you prefer and what works. At least in an, at a uh, graduate level, if you're going to be teaching in college, for instance. Um, and at the same time, you're doing work on your degree, whether it be a master's or a PhD. Um, what have you, and working with your professor and doing research and TAing classes and grading papers and all this kind of stuff. It's actually quite a lot of work. Um, but alternatively, you could be offered a research assistantship where you are primarily paid to do research under your, under your advisor. Um, you're expected to do a bit more because you are not teaching most often, except taking classes yourself, which a TA also may be doing. A TA may also be taking classes themselves. So there's a lot that they do with that particular salary. And that's what I mean. That's what they mean when they say salary, because oftentimes PhD students and master students are being paid a stipend as part of their graduate program, be it from a teaching assistantship or from a research assistantship. Um, what also tends to happen is if they're working with a professor, there's lines in budgets for grant proposals and what have you, that allows you to pay the tuition of the students that you hire to work with you. Um, and as such, most of the time, only students the only thing students have to pay to the university is fees. So grants that professors get when they want to hire students will pay for tuition, will also pay the stipend of the student, and more and more often now will pay insurance benefits. Admittedly, not the best insurance benefits in the world, but will pay for medical insurance um, for the students because they're temporary Cons because students are considered temporary. You go off into the world and what have you after your degree. Um, you don't necessarily get the best and prettiest benefits in the world, nor do you necessarily get the biggest salary in the world. Um, and that's why I wanted to show this off um, here. Two weeks before professors were set to administer final exams last month at the University of Illinois, Chicago, 1,500 graduate teaching assistants went on strike to demand a wage increase. Union representatives had been at the bargaining table with the university for a year since April 2021, trying to negotiate a new contract after the previous one expired. But the two sides hadn't been able to reach an agreement. Quote, that the raises that they were offering at that point were far less than inflation. There's a wonderful typo, science. Um, says UIC mathematics PhD student Matt DeVilbus, a member of UIC's Graduate Workers Union who helped coordinate picketing during the strike. As inflation got worse, it became more important. The strike lasted six days, finally ending just before midnight on April 25th when a tentative deal was reached. 
Graduate workers want a 16% raise, which will bring their annual stipend up to a guaranteed minimum of $24,000 over the next three years. They also secured limits on increases to student fees, which can eat away at up to $4,500 of their take-home pay. So yes, what I was just saying, tuition may be paid, but you have to pay the fees as the student still. Um, which, you know, that's part of the deal, unless you want to change, unless you want to go change how uh, research assistantships are done, or how grant proposals are done, what have you, and have the um, professor pay for the fees. But part of the reason they don't is sometimes the fees are, um, the, the fees come with choices. Sometimes, like, if you do end up staying on campus for whatever reason, it's about dorms and housing, what have you, and other students don't. So that's why it's kind of a, it's a wild juggling act to try and pay for fees with grant proposal dollars and things like that, because you don't know. Um, so that's often why they, they get that to the student. And it gives the student a little bit more flexibility in terms of what do they, what do they want in services sometimes um, from the university. Anyway, total other tangent. Um, because some, most, of, okay, most often than not, I should clarify this, most often than not, graduate students don't live on campus. But there are some, instance, some instances where they do. And they do, some universities do offer graduate student housing. You, that's partly covered with the fees. That's what I mean by that. Um, but not all students do. So that's a choice to add um, to, to the fees you want to pay is if you're going to live in graduate student housing. Let's see. PhD students have decried miserly wages for decades. Now amid rising cost of living, the problem is taking on new urgency. Quote, there's no question that students are struggling to survive, says Michelle Gaynor, a PhD student studying botany at the University of Florida Gainesville. We are really selecting against people who are low income or from marginalized communities. She adds, we can't talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, and not talk about this. Of course, that has to come into this somewhere. Doesn't matter. It's a paycheck thing, really. <clears throat> Let's see. Do, 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 do. Across the country, many graduate students strain to get, on, get by on wages that aren't sufficient to meet their basic needs. A third of our students struggle to afford rent, and 15% struggle to afford food. Jane Petzolt. An etymology master's student says of her department at North Carolina State University in Raleigh, where rents have risen by more than 20% in the past year. A national survey of 3,000 graduate students conducted in 2020 similarly found that more than one quarter of respondents suffer from housing and food or food insecurity. Some universities are attempting to proactively address the situation. At Princeton University, for instance, PhD students in the natural sciences and engineering will see their largest ever raise in the 2022-2023 academic year commences. $8,280, bringing the total stipend up to $40,000. And last, that's actually pretty high. I'm going I'm to point that out right now. For, for, for graduate students, that's high. That's high. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm also going to say, because that's uh, that's Princeton, Princeton, New Jersey. You can't live alone on that, I don't think, not in Princeton. Um, anyway, last month, Yale University announced student parents are el eligible for a $7,500 subsidy for the first child and $2,500 uh, $2, for each additional child, in addition to a $2,000 annual uh, increase in their annual paychecks that all graduate students in the sciences will receive. Quote, raising a family while in graduate school is always challenging, and we saw an amplified need for childcare flexibility during the worst months of the pandemic and beyond. And Lynn Cooley, the dean of Yale's graduate school, wrote in a statement announcing the plan. Still, these are these steps don't immediately or fully solve the problem. At many universities across the country, graduate students have turned to picking up protest signs for recourse. In California, where the largest protests have taken place so far this year, representatives of the University of California Graduate Workers Union are currently at the bargaining table asking for pay increases to reflect the high cost of living in the state. More than 90% of UC employees are rent burdened, meaning they pay more, of 30, more than 30% of their wage on rent. Um, I'm not gonna, I, I will butcher the name if I try to pronounce it. I apologize. I'm going to skip that. Um, PhD student at UC Davis and one of the graduate students bargaining with UC representatives. It shouldn't be that, quote, only people who come from wealthy backgrounds or who have some support, some sort of other support can make it in academia. So the point here that they're making with this, and I don't want to read entirely through this whole article, the point that they're making here with this is that they want more salary for PhD students. And generally speaking, on average, in the United States, in the United States, it tends to range from 
18000 to roughly 40 some odd thousand dollars in an annual salary for a PhD student. For some of these areas, um, for some universities and some locations, like I mentioned Princeton, California is another one, that's not enough to live comfortably on your own, for sure. Um, and to live independently on your own. That's just enough to make it by, to eat by for a lot of these places. So I can understand that. The question that I asked when I saw this come across my feed, the question that I asked though was, how are we going to pay for it? Because here's the tricky, tricky problem with this. Um, it's that the problem here is that you do have to get the money from somewhere. And a lot of these TAs and RAs, as I mentioned, are paid ultimately, not by the university, but by the grants that different professors receive. Some professors will receive grant funding to pay for a student and put it toward a TA, or some will put it toward an RA. Choice of the professor for the most part. Um, but that then, if you will, let's, let's see. How do I put this? If you raise then the salary of your students not saying you shouldn't just this is just really the point to point out here it's going to be more and more difficult to hire more students because the salary raises goes up and then professors have to tack more into their budgets for grant proposals to account for that and most of those grant proposals include something like a, some kind of x percent cost of living increase every year um you have to account for that we already have a problem where we're graduating, and maybe I'll do another video on this, but where we're graduating a lot more PhDs than we did in the past. All of those PhDs then also have to go on to compete for grant funds, not just to pay for their own salaries, but also to pay for any students they want to hire. Do you see where I'm going with this? That it's a compounding problem in that it's not necessarily fiscally sustainable because the vast majority of these grants are paid for by the federal government, um, essentially. That's why I kind of worry about this, that it's going to be in the long term a problem. And I apologize if you heard something that was my printer. Um, in the long term, it may very well be a problem. And I am concerned that if we're going to continue producing some of the best scientific research, that there has to be, fiscally speaking, other ways of paying for it. Um, and I have seen some things put forward, ideas like crowdfunding. Um, I got I got to look it up again, but somebody, a friend of mine, sent me a uh, sent me a link for a crowdfunding site that does um, that does that is specifically for scientific research kind of thing. Crowdfund your scientific research. Might work. Um, but it is a concern. And so we got to think carefully, you know, where are we getting the money from to pay for the salaries? I'm not saying we shouldn't. I actually do think grad students deserve a little bit more than what they're getting in terms of, you know, in terms of a stipend for the amount of work that they do. Because if you're thinking, if you're thinking about the TAs, for instance, they are teaching. So what it comes, what comes with teaching, running a class, grading papers, meeting with other students who are undergrads, meeting with the professor who has actually got their name on there as the one giving lecture most of the time. Um, because sometimes as a TA, you're teaching a lab and your professor is teaching a lecture, those kinds of things. And on top of that, on top of all of those things, you're taking classes yourself and you're trying to get your research done if you're at that point where you're actually doing research and writing up your dissertation or your master's thesis. That's a lot. That is a lot to do. And it is very true what they say that it can be, you have no life. Um, you have no social life for a while for a lot of these things. Um, and a research assistantship can be very similar in that you're doing a lot of research on the side, not necessarily just your own, but others, other things that you're helping out with your own professor, um, and taking classes yourself. 
average time to finish a PhD in the United States is six years. Um, and that's because there is a tremendous amount of work involved, particularly when you're taking classes, TA and research, all those other kinds of things, write-ups, what have you. There's hiccups that happen along the way with, with, with different people transitioning in and out of um, being committee members and what have you. You know, professors have career changes too, so those things kind of happen, and that screws up a grad student's journey. All of those other kinds of things. So there's, like any position actually, a lot of hiccups that happen. A lot of hiccups that happen in employment. So I don't know. Let me know what you think. If you think uh, PhD students should have their uh, salaries raised and how we might figure that one out if you do. And if you don't, why don't you? I'd be curious to hear. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button on the way out the door. If you like the video, comment on the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, all that lovely good jazz. And until next time, I'm Adrian, and I hope you stay curious, my friends.